entrance and temple. The desires of his heart are from age to age to rescue their soul from death and to keep them alive in time. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with your On this beautiful Friday morning, we gather to celebrate the most sacred heart of Jesus, the love of God for us. God loves us unconditionally, not because of what we do or say, it is because he is a God of love. Let us ask this God of love for his mercy and You said to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May He forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Together, let us pray the glory. <coughs> glory to God. Amen. And on earth, peace to people of the will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your prayer for glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. 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 Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we who glory in the heart of your beloved Son and recall the wonders of his love for us may be made, may be made worthy to receive an overflowing measure of grace from the fount of heavenly gifts. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, You are a people sacred to the Lord, your God. He has chosen you from all the nations on the face of the earth to be his people, particularly his own. It was not because you are the largest of all nations that the Lord set his heart on you and chose you, for you are really the smallest of all nations. It was because the Lord loved you and because of his fidelity to the oath he had sworn to your fathers that he brought you out of his strong hand, with his strong hand, from the place of slavery and ransom you from the hand of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. Understand then that the Lord your God is God indeed, the faithful God who keeps his merciful covenant down to the thousandth generation toward those who love him and keep his commandments, but who repays with destruction a person who hates him. He does not dally with such one but makes them personally pay for it. You shall therefore carefully observe the commandments and the statutes and the decrees that I enjoin on you today. The word of the Lord. Be to God. The Lord of kindness is everlasting to those who fear him. The Lord of kindness is everlasting to those who fear him. Bless the Lord, O my soul, all my being, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord's kindness is everlasting to those who fear him. 
He pardons all your iniquities, heals all of your ills. He redeems your life from destruction, crowns you with kindness and compassion. The Lord's kindness is everlasting to those who fear him. Merciful and gracious is the Lord, slow to anger and abounding in kindness. Not according to our sins does he deal with us, nor does he requite us according to our crimes. The Lord's kindness is everlasting. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, let us love one another because the love is of God. Everyone who loves is begotten by God and knows God. Whoever is without love does not know God, for God is love. In this way, the love of God was revealed to us. God sent his only son into the world so that we might have life through him. In this is love. Not that we have loved God, but that he has loved us and sent his son as expiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we must also love one another. No one has ever seen God. Yet if we love one another, God remains in us and his love is brought to perfection in us. This is how we know that we remain in him and he is in us, that he has given us his spirit. Moreover, we have seen and testify that the Father sent his Son as our Savior to the world. Whoever acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God remains in him and he in God. We have come to know and to believe in the love God has for us. God is love, and whoever remains in, his, in love remains in God, and God in him. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Take my yoke upon you, says the Lord, and learn from me. For I am meek and humble of heart. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus exclaimed, I give you, I I give you praise to you, Father, Lord in heaven and earth. For although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to the little ones. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Father wishes to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves. For my yoke is easy, and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. Good morning. All of us enjoy receiving invitations. Invitations to a meal or to a wedding or some special event. Invitations like to uh, Mardi Gras balls. Those invitations use this peculiar wording. It says, the king and the queen of the royal court of Xanadu Bonaparte commands your presence at the annual Mardi Gras ball. Usually the invitations are printed on real fancy little cards that had the little French uh, abbreviation for please reply. My brothers and sisters, today the gospel is truly, truly a divine invitation from Jesus. We should take care to hear his invitation correctly. The invitation is not a command. It is a reality, and it is truly a free, loving invitation 
from the sacred heart of Jesus, our true King. Today, Jesus speaks what are among the most tender and appealing words I think I've ever heard him utter. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Those words have been immortalized in many different ways. But for myself, I can never hear these words without remembering a time in my life when I most, most needed to hear it. It was a time in my own life when I truly needed some direction. It was a time in my life when I drifted away from Jesus. I didn't realize at the time, but the further I drifted away from Jesus, the heavier my burdens were. The further I drifted away from Jesus, the more I labored in life. I can remember laying prostrate down at the foot of the altar at a retreat house named Manresa that I go to every year. And I was feeling the weight of the world on my shoulders from the disappointments that I had created in my life. And then hearing those words of Jesus, come to me, all who labor and are burdened, I will give you rest. I still vividly remember my surrender and the tears that flowed from my eyes as the burden lifted after a wonderful and complete confession. Today, Jesus invites each and every one of us. The invitation reads, come to me. Come to me, all who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Notice that the invitation is addressed to us. He's speaking to us, to us humans. Far from being complimentary, he likens us to an ox laden or collared with a load that threatens to crush them. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves. For my yoke is easy and my burden light. Many of us are burdened with anxieties, fears, temptations, and loneliness. Above all, we're collet with the burden of our failures that are properly called sins. I like when I think about sins is to remember where the word comes from. In ancient times, the, the archeries, the people that shoot the bow, bow and arrows, is they miss the mark. When they miss that mark, that's called a sin. I've missed the mark several times, many, many times in my life. Seldom do I hit the bullseye. But I like the word sin because it reminds me that when I drift from Jesus, I miss the mark. So what is the yoke? of Jesus. Judas spoke of the yoke as the Torah, the yoke of the law, because in the Old Testament, a yoke was a symbol of submission to authority. What Jesus meant when he says, take my yoke from me, he, ex he explains by adding, and learn from me. He means, take my law upon you, my commandments upon you, Learn from me. Say yes to my commandments to loving one another as I taught you by my sacred heart. That doesn't sound too hard. It's a way of liberation because the burden that we lose when we follow Jesus is heavy. And the burden we gain when we follow Jesus is light. One of the greatest paradoxes of the Christian life under his yoke, we find rest. Through love and service to one another, we find freedom. When we lose ourselves in loving, we find ourselves when we die to our self-centeredness and we begin to truly, truly live. Father Blessing had this little card on his desk for years, and it was a quote, and I forgot by whom, but it said simply, 
I slept and dreamt that life was joy. I awoke and saw that life was service. I acted and behold, service was joy. May our God be blessed. Please understand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, maker of the earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten of the Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God and the Almighty Father. Look, O oh Lord, we pray, on the surpassing charity in the heart of your beloved Son, that what we offer may be a gift acceptable to you and an expiation of our offenses. Through Christ our Lord, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For raised up high on the cross, he gave himself up for us with a wonderful love and poured out blood and water from his pierced side, the wellsprings of the church's sacraments, so that one over to the open heart of the Savior, all might draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. And so, with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end. We are clean. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, every prayer of glory and glory, the Son and the Christ, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the Son and the Christ. 
Yes, you are indeed holy, O Lord, a fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more given thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. Oh. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you are set us Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, given thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Douglas our Bishop, and all the clergy, and your faithful people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, formed by the divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress and troubles as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, O Lord, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I Our four our parishioners who are watching us at home. <coughs> My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this time receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Communion unto those. Thus says the Lord, Let whoever is thirsty come to me and drink. Streams of living waters will flow from within the one who believes in me. Let us May this sacrament of charity, O Lord, make us fervent in the fire of holy love, so that drawn away, drawn always to your Son, we may learn to see him in our name. Through Christ our Lord, the Lord be with you. May the Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Now the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks. 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 Thanks.